Hello, hello, hello. Something a bit different. Uh, we're doing some guitar modification, maintenance. I don't know. Um, but if any of you have bought a modern guitar lately, especially Fender, Mexican made, they've got rid of rosewood necks. You know, the rosewood fingerboards are long gone because of CITES rules, I believe. And they've been replaced with something called Pal Ferro, which is a kind of rosewood, but it doesn't necessarily have the same qualities as a traditional rosewood neck. Um, I don't have a problem with Pal Ferro, but when you get it, usually when you get it straight out of the box, it can be very dry and a very dusty wood. And it can also look a little bit anemic. It doesn't have the color and the luster and the fill of a rosewood fingerboard. And so what we're gonna do here, I've got this little pot of stuff. This is uh, Monty from Monty's Guitars. Oh, I'm not sponsored by them, but if they're watching, send a check to the usual address. Um, but I've been using this. This is um, from a company called Monty's Guitars in London. I'll leave a link in the description. And it's like um, a wax, but it stains the wood of the neck. And you can use it for aging of your guitars if you're doing a, you know, a relicking job. But it's also good for giving some lustre to Pal Ferro necks. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the, like a before and after video. So I'm going to put this, this is a, a Fender Mustang 60s Vintera guitar and it's got a power furrow neck and what we're going to do is we're going to put some of this Monty stuff on there and um, see if it can make a difference. Again this is purely cosmetic, it's not going to make you play any better, it's just uh, you know to change the power furrow from a, a rather dry dusty coarse looking wood into something that is a little bit more photogenic. You know, that's all, that's all this is. This isn't going to, like I say, improve anything. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. So here we have the guitar neck. I have my Monty's guitar wax. What you need to do is get a little bit of, um, I'm using kitchen roll here, but if you've got an old cloth that you want to use, you can use that. But I just tend to use this because, you know, <laughs> I don't have any old cloths. Ha -ha. So uh, yeah, it's it's not the nicest stuff to use, and you should really wear gloves. But hey, I'm I'm a big tough guy, and it looks like there's been a bit of a what can I say, dirty protest in prison <laughs> with this stuff because it is thick and it is brown and it is waxy. But um, how I tend to use it is I tend to liberally, and you've got to get it all into the. Um, into the wood, you know, into the pal ferro, and it takes a bit of time because, like I say, you want to be thorough and you want to get it all in. And again, as it gets warmer, the uh, the wax does get a bit easier to um, to apply. Again, if it's a cold day, you might need to uh, you know rub it a bit harder. That's what she said. Ah, oh, now I've done, I've done the joke. I shouldn't do the joke. Uh, I'll get cancelled. Um, but yeah, now I don't expect the first application of this to darken it too much. You will need more than one or two applications, especially on, on a neck of this kind. This is one of the driest necks I've had in, you know, and that's why I'm using, that's why I'm actually doing this video because I've not had a Pal Ferro this dry, a, you know, a fretboard this dry. So, um, so yeah, this has got to be the driest, the driest neck of I've, I've had. So, um, yeah, so you just go up the neck, up the fretboard, applying the wax. It takes a bit of time and it is messy. You should probably put a paper down, but don't worry, I'm gonna go over the, I'm gonna, 
I'm used to making a mess. <laughs> so, yeah. Again, this isn't for everyone, but this is just demonstrating how, you know, you can make it a little bit more aesthetic. Because, as you saw, that neck was pretty, pretty dry and pretty, pretty, well, nondescript, really. And you want something with a bit of luster, something that's going to call out to you. It doesn't look appealing, does it? You know, again, it is all, the, it is all a bit aesthetics, but you know, I'm of the mind that they should never have got rid of rosewood. But there you go. But I don't want to be a pound farrow snob because once you do treat it and you apply this a couple of times, and then you know, you treat it with some then treat it with some lemon oil, um, you will get a neck that's a lot more. visually pleasing so yeah so yeah that's it for a minute now the next thing we need to do is just wait we let this settle in and you can leave it for well, 10 minutes an hour you know the longer you leave it they say on the instructions the um, the deeper the effect it will have so I'm just going to leave this for for a while and then we're going to remove it and clean it up see if it's had any effect we can you do a, a before and after comparison. I'll then apply some lemon oil to it just to give it a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, moisture because again it did come across as a bit dry. But there you go. So that's what we're going to do. That's all we need to do at the moment. And now we've just got to let time let time take its toll. Um, like I said, it does leave a bit of a mucky bit of paper and it is supposed to stain your fingers as well but I've not had, I've not had too much problem with that so yeah they recommend you use gloves but I just you know I'm a big tough guy so I don't bother so yeah now we've just got to wait and let the um, the Monty's wax take effect so what we're doing now is we're wiping the wax off of the the neck I've done some of it already because you don't really want to see me you know, get through all of this because it's boring. Um, so yeah, you do need quite a bit of kitchen roll to remove the wax off the neck. It is a dirty, horrible job. It's the worst part of the job. But we're getting there and you do have to be careful because around the frets you can build up and leave a bit of a, a bit of a a mess but we're getting there we're nearly done I mean as you can see it has had an effect it has uh, darkened the neck somewhat but again as I was saying previously you may need two maybe three applications to a particularly dry um, power ferro board I mean, you know, this one was, oh, I think it is the worst one I've ever seen for dryness. And I've had quite a few, maybe three or four, maybe even five guitars that are, are like this, you know, that, are, that have a power ferro board. And, you know, but this one was just absolutely anemic. It was very, very powerful. And you can understand why, you know, I've done this. I mean, it has brought out the figuring. Look at that. You know, the uh, the ring, the rings of the uh, of the wood. You can see now that's really brought it out. And like I say, with a bit more application, I think you could get this even darker. But like I said, we're just demonstrating this, you know, like an AB kind of demonstration, just to give you an idea of what it can do with just one. Um, because again. What I tend to do is I leave this for a while, you know, and every time I change the strings, I, uh, I add a, another application of this, and so the necks become even more, even more lustrous over time. But now we've done that and we've cleaned all the, all the worst of that off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly add, add a. a 
a quick application of lemon oil to this, which will again, should make a difference. Now I use, again, this isn't an advert, but I use Dunlop 65, fretboard ultimate lemon oil. Got a bit of a leaky, bit of a leaky lid, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this should also just give And it'll also help, um, it'll help clean off those frets and everything. It'll get the rest of that wax off and then we come to take that off. But this will give it a little bit of fun. Um, a little bit of luster as well. and means that And there you go. Just let that soak in for a bit. Take that lemon oil off and as you can see it has made a real difference uh, to the finish of the guitar neck you know the power furrows now like i said you've got some nice figuring it's really brought that out and you know whilst it it's, you know it's not the deep reds and browns of a uh, you know of classic rosewood it's certainly not that anemic rubbish that we started with it's you know but given a bit of life to it and again with further applications you can get this even you know even darker and make it even more well almost almost I many again it's not like rosewood because you get this kind of figuring in it which you don't get with rosewood so you know it's almost almost like walnut really but um there you go so yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been informative. Um, again, it's not a, a, an advertisement for this Monty's guitar wax, but you know, it's just one of the processes that you can use to improve the general look of Power Ferro and get it, you know, in a ballpark closer to rosewood. I mean, it's not going to look exactly like it because it is a different kind of wood. But yeah, if you don't like that dry, dusty anemic you know parched you know look that the the power ferro has um, this is one way of treating it uh, like i say you use some of this and then the older uh, lemon oil again there are many different brands of that um, and you can again breathe some more life to it and again if you use this continually you know adding extra layers to it um, it will make it go even darker so yeah, hopefully this has been useful. My name is Darren Lott. I have been trying to improve the look of Pound Ferro using some wax and some lemon oil and elbow grease. Uh, don't forget, you know, like the video and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And uh, maybe, maybe one day we'll do something like this again soon. There's only one more thing left to say, and by now you should know what that is, and that is, ta -da.